Melinda from Hope When There Was None. How are you doing today? And I'm coming to you to discuss terms used to describe abusers and tactics that they use. Now, why is this important? When I first found out that I was abused, I only knew that there was abuse. I was amazed at that as it was. I had no idea that there were other, other types of abuse besides the normal. And what I mean by that is there is the physical, there is your emotional, there is your financial, there is your sexual, there is your mental, there is your elder abuse, there is your religious abuse. Who I could go on and on. There are several different, you know, there's animal abuse, there's a satanic ritual abuse as well. So there's so many different umbrellas of abuse that I, I knew those once I got familiar with those terms, but I didn't know that there were other terms as well. Like, um, as an example, let's start out with some red flags. What the heck are red flags? I had no idea what red flags were. I didn't know. So red flags are used to describe, it's kind of like the feeling that you get when you um, you have some instincts there. We all have those and it's very important that we act on those. So if you have this gut feeling that something's going on, it's just not right with a person, hey girl, you run away. And no, I don't mean you to run away. I'm just saying in general, run away. So when you hear red flags, usually people say, run the other direction. Don't go running towards this person. Run the other way. Um, because again, we don't always use our instinct, our gut feelings. We might just blow it off. Or we might have, hey, Via, we might have people that um, just kind of say, you know what? No, just let it go. It's okay. He's a wonderful guy. Look what he does for the animals. Or look at she runs charities. She can't be that bad. Don't listen to them. Please, please trust your instinct. Not only trusting your instinct, but perhaps you might have to let your guard down a little bit and trust what your friends and family are actually saying. So if it's not those people that are pushing you towards a person that you have funny feelings about, but if it's actually family and friends and you know it's not a vindictive thing, you know they got your back, please listen to them. Our children are also very, very important and critical. If you know that your child is normally very friendly with people, very warm and caring, but you notice that something's a little off. Maybe this child, you left them alone. Now all of a sudden your child has nightmares. Perhaps they're wetting the bed. They might just be afraid of this person anytime that they get close. Please, please, please. I can't stress enough how important that is. And even our fur babies, perhaps you don't have children. Maybe you have pets. Maybe you've let this person, again, same situation, sit for your pet. If this animal that's usually normally loving and caring to you all of a sudden just starts growling, might whimper and run away when this person comes in the room, please listen to that. These are so important. It gives me the goosebumps just talking about this because we don't always act on those. Sometimes we just think our child is misbehaving, our pet's just misbehaving. Oh, they're just jealous because I'm in a new relationship. No, please, it's very important. There's a difference. There's a difference between that kind of jealousy and when they start acting out in a fear. Or again, if it's a pet, they start growling or, or something like that you can tell the difference. And again, listen to your friends and family, please. I know sometimes when we start in relationship, we're like this. We have these blinders on. I know I'm guilty. We have these blinders on and the world is rosy and we are just singing. Everything is fine. Everything looks good to us and just peachy. So we might not always listen or we kind of tune what everybody else says out about this new person that we might be fixated with. So please, red flags, that's important. There are other red flags. I'm not going to go through too many of them now, but um, a few of them are. They might profess love for you after a few dates. After a week, they might say, hey, you know, I really love you very much. You know, I've never felt this way with anybody else before. And that's definitely a red flag. If someone's coming on to you like that, they may prefer or excuse me, they may ask you to choose between them and maybe a friend or a family member. They might say, okay, it's either them or the highway. That's a red flag. Please listen to these red flags. Google red flags. There are a bunch more. I'm not going to get into everything for all of these because I have quite a few down. I will also have a PDF of this. And if you watch many of my, my videos, I do share PDFs. So if you know somebody that might benefit from this, please message me privately. I'm happy to share this with you as well. 
This will also be on my YouTube channel. So if you just Google and it's bless me, please. 09. I'll drop the link here a little bit later in the uh, in the box so you can know where to find these for later for viewing later or sharing with your friends. Okay, so we're going to discuss narcissists. So what is a narcissist? So a narcissist, again, and just in a nutshell, is somebody that is very self-absorbed. They it's just all about them. The world revolves around them. I think we all know somebody of this. Now these terms aren't necessarily for just a loved one they you know a partner this could be with your co-worker this could be with somebody that's your boss maybe it's your mom your dad even your own child and you know i hope to maybe um work with somebody i know a couple people off the top of my head about uh, raising narcissists so when they're a child if they've been exposed to something like an abusive relationship how can we squash that so that's an upcoming interview i don't have that set in stone yet but that's one of them that i hope to do within the next six months or so sociopath now some of these that again the narcissist the sociopath these are mental health issues and i'm also going to talk about a, a, a psychopath so these are more mental health issues now Sometimes when we have an abuser, they do have these issues, these mental health issues. So we need to address that. So I'm not making any excuses for the behavior. Not at all. There is no excuse for abuse. There's none at all. You can't just say, oh, well, he had a moment or she had a moment. No, there's never an excuse. There's never a time when it's okay to abuse a person. So let me just clarify that. So again, narcissist, we hit that. So sociopath. So sociopath is someone that has no conscious and, and some of these can actually be you can have more than one with a person um, so ted bundy is one of those and i associate with ted bundy only because it's so fresh in my mind since my own ex was um was told that he was very similar he had those similar patterns as ted bundy so ted bundy is a very, very famous sociopath, but they also describe him as a psychopath. But with a sociopath, they have no conscience. They're more anti antisocial with their behavior and their tendencies as well. So psychopaths, now on the subject of psychopaths, and also um, Bun uh, Gacy, William, is it William Gacy? And Gacy, I'm just going to say Gacy. He was, I believe, a psychopath. So this person, again, has a lack of conscience. They have violent behavior. They might have aggressive behavior. These are people that you don't want to set off, okay? And But it does happen. What's a covert abuser? Now, we touched on covert abuse, so I'm not going to really get into it, but that is another term. If you are unfamiliar with that term, I did a video with Helena Knowles. Please view that. It's very important. She gave a lot of great information on that, so please check that out in our video section. Gaslighting. Gaslighting is, that's one of the other terms that I discovered when I left because I had no idea. I have to be on, I don't know where Google sent me, but it sent me somewhere. But I found gaslighting and it seemed to fit a lot of the things that my abuser was doing as well. Gaslighting is where you doubt your sanity. You just think that you're crazy. They will make you feel like you are absolutely insane. You doubt your sanity. You begin to think that um, maybe they're right. Maybe my judgment's off. Maybe I am going insane. Maybe I did move those keys to the other side of the house. Or maybe, maybe you're right. You just start maybeing yourself. So that's gaslighting, okay? There is a famous movie that I can't remember off the top of my head, but there is a movie, you can Google that too, that shows a lot of Gaslighting. The, the girl in there just, just thinks she's nuts. I think it's from the 40s. And um, I think I have something, again, somewhere on here about that. Hoovering. What the heck is hoovering? Now, some of these are new to me. I never heard of hoovering before and a few more of these other terms until recently. So what the heck is hoovering? It's not your vacuum. What it is, is the ability, it, it has something to do with sucking. The <laughs> partner is sucking you back into your relationship. Now, they'll do this by being kind. They will do this by saying so many nice things. And now what they're doing, they're trying to see if they can kind of worm their way back in. If there's any chance that they can get back in your good graces, that maybe there's a chance, perhaps they're already in a new relationship, but they're unhappy. Maybe this person is not as compliant as you were. So they want to see, they're kind of testing the waters to see if they can get back into your life. So that's hoovering. Now you, it's just going to be the same cycle, but that's what it's called. So also 
gray stoning, gray stone. So a gray stone, you have a rock. I, I was going to bring you a prop, but you have a rock here, okay? It's nothing pretty. It's pretty bland. It's pretty just dull. So that's what you're going to do to a person. Now, you're going to do this to your abuser. So what do I mean by this? When you see a gray rock, it's not pretty, it's not sparkly, it doesn't jump out at you, it's just nothing, it's blah. So that's what you're going to be to your abuser. So this person's going to talk to you, and they're going to try to engage you in conversation, and it might not even be a conversation where there's any um, any fighting, but what you do is you just, when they talk to you, you're just like, yes, no, uh-huh, right, yeah, I feel that way too, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to want to get sucked into his drama or her drama. You're going to maybe doodle. You're going to look away from the person. You're not going to look at them at all. You're not engaging as much as you can. And this is a tactic you can use now if you're in a relationship or maybe you have Maybe you have um, children together, grandchildren together, and you still need to see this person, just gray stone them, okay? So again, you're just kind of being monotone. You're not engaging. You're not going to be overly friendly. You'll just kind of be blah. You know, you're not going to give them any smile. You're just going to mm -hmm, scroll on social media, whatever you got to do. Don't engage this person because this person's looking for the added drama. You don't want to give them a chance to give you any added drama. So you don't need that. Okay. So also love bombing. So what the heck is love bombing? That's another thing. I didn't know what that is. So love bombing is when a person like let's say a lot of these fit into the cycle of the honeymoon too. So when you're doing love bombing or your person's doing love bombing, they are going to say very flattering words. Now maybe you're together, maybe you're not, but they might be saying some flattering words to you, just saying some sweet nothings. Oh baby, you're so sweet. Oh, no one can do it like you can. They might say, oh, I've never felt this way before again with the red flags. And perhaps they also compare you to past loves. They might love and like mysteriously or even hate the same things you do. What the heck, you know, how can that happen? And that's just almost darn near impossible to like everything, but they seem to do. And again, that's another red flag too. So we're going to kind of overlap those. They profess again, their love to you right away. They can use when they're love bombing you, believe it or not, what they can do is they can spin it around. So all of your insecurities that you have, they're going to spin those around and turn it against you. It happens. It happens. And I know it sounds really crazy, but, but it does. And again, that goes with the gaslighting too. They, a lot of these, like I said, they kind of go together. So we're going to talk about baiting. So what is baiting? And some of these you might already know. So when you're baiting a person, and it's not a hook, it's not a fishing line. So when you're baiting a person, what you are going to do is you're going to kind of provoke somebody, you know, poke in the bear or poking the monkey, whatever you're going to do, you're just going to kind of poke somebody. And it's not you, it's your abuser. They're going to try and get a rise out of you. They're going to say something maybe to your face, maybe while you're doing some sort of um, arrangement for visitation, perhaps you're at court. Maybe you are just uh, texting or Facebooking and you see on social media, sorry, I got allergies. So you're on social media and you're looking and you're scrolling and all of a sudden you see this butthead just saying these nasty things about you. And of course, this is going to get you all riled up. You might want to call him. You might want to fire back. You might want to say something mean and nasty back at him because, you know, hey, it's not true. He's saying all these things and they're not true. They're totally not true. And so what they want to do is they're going to turn these things around. So what they're saying is that you're this mean, nasty, horrid person, but they're saying all these untruths, okay? They're going to make you seem like you're awful, you're mentally unstable, and or just part of the problem. So doing so, again, it's going to take the heat off of them. Everyone's going to see them as this wonderful person, and this is going to spin out into my next term too. So they're going to come off as the sweetest person ever. The abuser, now what is he getting, or he or she getting? They're getting control because they caused you to go ahead and react. You've reacted, and I've done this guilty, and I know, I know I shouldn't have done it, but you are going to end up getting into this heated exchange. This person is now going to be the victim. Yeah, it's a lot of this. They do a lot of mind games with us. So also, so with that, with the baiting, again, we have our victim here who was, was our abuser, but now is our victim, flying monkeys. 
Now, this isn't your Wizard of Oz monkey. So what this is, is someone, let's say your abuser that just baited you, has now this active participant, these, this audience, social media. They have this audience now, and they can spin all these lies and all these webs and to say these nasty things. And, you know, do you remember Susie Jane when you were at that party and this happened? And then Susie Jane's going to go, Oh my God, she did. She's going to go on social media. She's going to blast you. She's going to say this about you. She's going to say, I heard this and such and such. Joe Bob, he is awesome. He's the sweetest guy in this woman's horrible. She'll call you names, whatever it is. They're going to slander you pretty soon. It'll just snowball. You might have more and more. This could be family. This could be friends. It's going to turn nasty and it can go fast. So my friends, what I'm trying to tell you is don't react. It's going to be hard. It's going to be so hard not to react. Now, those of you that are still in your relationships now that haven't left your abuser, and I don't want to scare you, please, anything I tell you, I'm not telling you to scare you. I'm telling you so you're informed, so you know what you're getting into. I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. I told you before, when I'm telling you something, it's because I'm being honest, I'm being genuine, and I want you to be prepared. The best way to do this is find out, and you don't just have to listen to me rant there dozens of other videos out there, but I want you to be informed. I want you to be well aware that this could possibly happen to you. You might have to clean out your friend list. You might have to change the settings on your friend list for social media because people that you thought were friends, all of a sudden they are siding with your abuser and it can be really, really nasty. And again, you trust these people sometimes if you just leave your abuser, all of a sudden your abuser knows where you're at or they know where your children are, they know where you live now. Please, you have to really, really know who your friends are when you go through this. Mine was friending all of my, my family. And, you know, my family, of course, luckily they had my bag, but he was trying to get whatever information he could out of family. He was coming off really sweet and pleasant and so on and so on. But so please, 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 please be careful. And even your exes, your in-laws, maybe you've been dating for a long time and you have his family or her family, please, blood is thicker than water. You might think, okay, it's been four years. They still think he's a scumbag or she's just a jerk. Blood is thicker than water in the end. The very slim chance that you will remain friends with any of the family members, that they won't turn against you, or not even so much that they won't turn against you. They just won't want to be involved in the drama. So rather than deal with both of you, they'll probably just cut you out because dealing with him, they know what to expect. They know... They could just blow him off. He's still family and they'll just let him or her off to the side. So you might get your heat feelings hurt, especially if you've known people for a very long time. And uh, this can be very hard. So I know, been there, done this. So let's talk about enabling. So you can be codependent and you can enable your person. So by enabling, you're in, in some ways, you're kind of giving them a free pass to say it's okay to kind of beat you around, maybe beat your kids around or steal your money or call you names, whatever sort of abuse that they're doing to you. You're kind of giving them a, a, a like a get out of jail card free. You're letting them do this. And I'm not being hard on you. I'm not being critical on you. I'm not judging you. Been there. I know. I've done this. And you you might be scared. You might feel guilt. He, these people are very good at making you feel guilty. They will also, they, they, in some ways, you might feel like you have a little control. You might have a little leverage. You know, if I go along and do this, then I know, or, you know, there's different things. You can bargain again with this. So what I want you to do is to start noticing the crazy. You, you kind of have to set back, but you have to be in that mental state where you realize something's wrong with your relationship, that your partner is doing something wrong. Again, I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not a therapist. I'm just somebody that's been through, through the war. I know. I know, and I've been there. You have to realize your worth. You really do. You have to realize you're worth it, and you are you deserve so much better. And you're going to hear this from a lot of people. And I'm not just going to tell you that lightly. Again, if you went through counseling, if you went through therapy and nothing seems to be working, then that's your red flag. You need to go. You need to go. So you also might be experiencing, this is the last thing, 
the honeymoon phase. Oh, now who doesn't love the honeymoon, right? Well, this honeymoon is not painted with stars and wine and whatever else. Well, it might be, but the only stars you're going to see is if he knocks you upside your head or the only wine you're going to see is if he's drunk. Now, that doesn't always happen. Mine was not a drinker um, or he didn't do drugs, but my first stepdad did. So whatever type of feeling that you get, it's called a honeymoon phase. Okay, so let me start with that. So the feeling that you're waiting for, some people say eggshells, I'm going to say you're waiting for the other shoe to drop. Okay, so you feel this kind of a built up, you know, some everything's kind of going okay. Now this could last hours, this could last days, this could last weeks, this could last months. I've heard some people might last a year or longer. But you're always waiting, you're anticipating that something's going to happen, there's going to be this blowout. So with the cycle, number one, we're waiting. We're waiting patiently. We're waiting for that shoe to drop. It's still very uncomfortable at home or at work, whatever you're experiencing this at, or your mom's house, your dad's house. So you're trying to make things perfect. You're trying to make sure that nothing goes wrong. You want everything to go as perfectly as, as it can. In most cases, it'll be your fault anyway if it gets screwed up. So you're trying just to hold it together. So number two, Okay, so we have three stages to this. Number one, I just explained. Number two is that the shoe drops. It drops like a lead stone. So it drops. So what's going to happen? Your partner might yell at you. He might scream. He might hurt you. He might bite you. He might kick you, pull your hair, uh, throw things at you, throw things at the children if you have kids or your pets. He might uh, break things that are your favorite things, um, call you names, whatever it is. Might take all the money, might just not give you access to your accounts, might cut up your credit cards, might cut up your driver's license, take your keys away. Whatever it is, this person will do that to you. And this is a very volatile situation because at this point in time, many of us as victims do end up in the hospital or worse. This happens where it spirals so much out of control that you are injured and it's, it, you're just a mess. But then comes three. So with the third cycle, third part of the cycle, what happens is that person is all of a sudden, baby, I am so sorry. I never meant for that to happen. I, did, I don't know what happened. I, I just, I lost control. I am so sorry, baby. It won't ever happen again. Will you forgive me? I promise it won't ever happen again. I swear. I swear to you on my mother's grave or whatever else or our children's grave or I just swear to you it's never going to happen again. I promise. Does it sound familiar? Have you heard that before? I bet you you have. So that in that third stage, that person's going to apologize. That person even might turn it around and say, you know what? If you didn't make me mad, if you everything wasn't perfect, perhaps if you had done this, if you had wore this, if the children were better mannered, if your job didn't take so long for you to get to, or you didn't work long hours, whatever the excuse, they will think of it. And they will throw it on you just to say that it's your fault. Again, does it sound like anything you've ever experienced? Yeah, I, I'm sure I can have some hand raises up there. So you might end up with some serious inju injuries as well. They might make light of the situation. After it's all said and done, they might look at you crumpled up on the floor and they might laugh. They might make fun of you even more. They might just start laughing and, and thinking that this is hilarious, that you're bleeding or whatever happened. They just think this is hilarious. <sighs> they might even blame you for things that got broken. You know, if you didn't make me mad, I wouldn't have broke my mom's favorite cup. Or, you know, now look, we got to go buy a TV or whatever it is. They might blame it on you. This might then turn into a shopping spree. Uh, many abusers have very little control when it comes to money. And I, I don't understand that. I don't know what the psychology is. And if anybody knows, please tell me. I would love to know what the psychology behind that is. I don't know, but they will go on a spending spree. They'll send you every, you know, you'll go through the mall, you'll get new clothes, you'll get new toasters, whatever it is, they'll get you, they'll get the kids, they'll give you flowers, they'll just lavish so much attention on you. But then what happens? The cycle starts again. So you have to make a decision, dear one. Do you want to stay where you are? I mean, think about it now. I Usually when I talk to somebody, I ask them a couple things. One, 
Are you happy now? Is there any way at all that you think that this can work? Is there counseling? Have you tried therapy? Because I don't really like to have relationships end. I, no one likes to see in a relationship end. And if there's any way to get help, if this person is respond, responsive to help and they truly want to, maybe they need to uh, get off the alcohol, get off the drugs, maybe they need to go to anger management, whatever it is. If they seem to be willing, okay. But if they break that promise, you need to head to the door. Jump on the bus, Gus. Make a new plan, Stan. Yes, yes. I mean, I don't mean to make light, but you really need need to think about your life, your sanity, your your my gosh, just you. Now, health issues, a lot of abuse. You don't realize how much of our body holds holds uh, a memory of our abuse. So you might have fibromyalgia, you might have sleep issues, you might have heart issues, you might have blood pressure issues. The list goes on and on. And a lot of this is the breakdown of our body because of abuses. And also, um, it, it just, it, it's fascinating when you look at it. But of course, when this is happening to you, it's not so fascinating. But your body might be giving you off signs. If your mouth is not saying it, if your brain's not connecting to say, okay, I need to go. If your heart's not saying, okay, we need to leave. The rest of your body might be exhibiting different symptoms of anxieties, depression, uh, again, fibromyalgia, heart issues, even cancer. Some of these really, really MS, you might get diseases that because in a way you are you're staying, so it's almost like I'm gonna give up kind of thing, and, and I know that sounds strange, but it, it does happen. Please look it up, Google. Google is gonna be your friend if you are looking at this video. Please check this out. I'm not just blowing it out my behind. I'm telling you things because I've looked into these things. Um, but I hope I've given you some things to look at, and I know it's scary to leave because I know many of you have nowhere to go or feel that you don't have anywhere to go or you're in such a situation right now that you're scared to go and I get that I know I know but if you need some help you need to talk please message me privately we do have a group for not only abuse victims but anybody that's going through some sort of emotional healing for trauma healing uh, let's say you've had a loss grief whatever and so on and so on I uh, would love to give you a hand I've got some great members on there uh, please check out our other videos I'm gonna sign off I just want Wanted to come on here for a little bit but I see I'm almost a half hour out if uh, you have any other questions or concerns don't hesitate to buzz me I'd appreciate it if you could share this video I'd really appreciate it I'd love to get the word out there's a lot of terms here a lot of other folks don't know and um, I love you please stay safe wherever you are I believe in you and I know that um, there is happiness once you leave an emotional trauma, once you leave that abusive relationship. I, I guarantee you there is happiness. You've got to take some steps to keep yourself safe. I have some information for you or reach out to a local woman shelter. Even if you're not staying in that shelter, they do have services, outpatient services that can help you find an attorney, find housing. Uh, perhaps you need some sort of um job search as well they can help with this so please don't hesitate and, and i know there's a lot of people that do that they, they do hesitate please thank you <laughs> please just don't hesitate to contact the shelter and if you can't contact the one that's close to you maybe you feel a little off about it perhaps you've heard some bad things about that because that happens the people running those shelters they're human too so they aren't super people. They aren't Superman, Superwoman. They do have issues as well. So call another one. If that one doesn't help you, call another one. Find one maybe within a 50 mile to 100 mile radius that can help you. Don't give up. I'm not giving up on you. I love you. Stay safe. Talk to you later.